So this is that new WAN 2.6 video model? Yeah, videos up to 15 seconds, multi-shot capability, and built-in audio. I created that video using the new WAN 2.6 AI video model, and WAN 2.6 does have built-in audio, including dialogue, but for that one, I went ahead and enhanced the lip sync using Design's multi-character AI lip sync tool. Thanks to Design for sponsoring this video. They're a full-featured AI image and video generation and editing platform. I'll leave a link in the description. I've got plenty more examples of videos I've generated with WAN 2.6 to show you, but first, let's jump in and create one together. Inside Design, we'll create a new project, everything in Design is organized in projects. You can give your project a name or skip that for now. Select an aspect ratio and then click apply. Now we're inside the project. Over on the left, we want to click the AI video button where it says Kling 2.5 Turbo. That's the model. Let's click on that and select WAN 2.6. If you want to do image to video, use an image as your start frame. You can click that start frame button. We're going to skip that and just do text to video. I'll paste in a prompt here. Now I want to do a multi-shot video, which is one of the features of WAN 2.6. We can actually split this one video up and have it give us multiple shots within that one video clip. So in the prompt, I start with a general overview, a photorealistic view of a morning commute in a large city. And then I break down the rest of the prompt into the individual shots. So shot one, and I can even specify in there like I did here, I want that to be zero to five seconds, the subway train arriving, and then shot two at five to 10 seconds, and then shot three at 10 to 15 seconds. I wanna include the built-in sound in this video. So I gave it a little description of the sound there at the end of the prompt, and I specified no dialogue, because I don't want the people in this scene talking. I just wanna have the ambient sounds, the sounds of the scene. And since I do want sound, we need to go ahead and toggle this sound button on. If you describe the sound in the prompt, but don't toggle that button on, you won't get the built-in sound. Now, just to the right of the sound button, we'll click the settings. I'm gonna go ahead and change the aspect ratio to 16 by nine. Quality, we'll do 1080p. And then for duration, you can do five, 10, or 15 seconds with WAN 2.6. We need to do 15 seconds for this one because over in our prompt, remember we set up the shots going through 15 seconds. Now for the shot type, let's go ahead and switch that from single to multi-shot. We explained our multiple shots in the prompt. We just need the setting down here to match that. On the generate button, it shows how many credits that's gonna take, 315 credits. That's for a 15 second video at 1080p. We'll go ahead and click generate. And once it's finished, our video shows up in the results panel over here on the right. <laughs> It looks like it covered the prompt pretty well. The morning commute in a large city, that was kind of the overall theme. And then for the three shots, it's got the train showing up and the doors opening. It's got the commuters boarding. It's got a little bit of other motion there on the train. And it does look like it's departing through the tunnel. And I think we got decent ambient noise there along with no dialogue like we specified. Here's another text to video I created with WAN 2.6, this time a single shot. It definitely executed the overall vibe that I asked for, these two people and the tension. Now her exhale wasn't through her nose, it was through her mouth, but the sound and the face when she made that sound lined up pretty well. The only thing that popped out at me in this scene is that they don't appear to be sitting on a leather couch, but there's two leather couches in the background. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Otherwise, the color looks good. It did fine with the camera movement, the slow push in and the ambient sounds. For this one, I gave it a starting frame, an image of this pocket watch sitting on a table. I wanted to see how it would handle details with these little gears and the clock hands moving. Now this was supposed to be a multi-shot and it doesn't really look like a multi-shot. It is kind of just a zoom in, zoom out. At first look, the gear movement is really cool. Now, if you slow down, look at it super close, you can see that like some of the spindles will either disappear or emerge when they go past the hour hand. And the hour hand and the minute hand both move and they seem like they move a little bit too much. I think the issue is we don't have a second hand here to do the movement that we asked for in the prompt. And you know what? That's my fault. I didn't have a second hand in my starting image. Here's another one that uses a starting frame and multi-shot. Thank you. 
Is it perfect? Probably not. But this is pretty incredible that we can get a 15 second clip with multiple shots. Yeah, there in the beginning, it looked like he staggered a little bit. I don't know what that was about. And then that zoom and hold on his face where it looked more like a picture than it did movement because like there was nothing moving in his face at all. That seemed a little odd, but maybe that's just me. And I feel like even if I wasn't crazy about those things, we're at a point now where I think maybe I could make a few cuts and edits and make that totally usable. Definitely not where we were a year ago with this stuff. I've got a few more of these we'll look at, but let's go ahead and create a dialogue scene with WAN 2.6, and then we'll use Design's multi-character AI lip sync to enhance the lip sync. For this one, I have an image I want to use already in Design, so I'm going to open up that project. These two guys are the subjects I want to use. It's this top image right here. So under that, I'm just going to click AI video. Over on the left, the AI video panel pops out. We'll switch this model from Kling over to WAN 2.6. For the prompt, I've got, this is a cinematic scene of two friends having a conversation standing outside. The man on the right says in a somewhat surprised and disappointed tone, and then I've got his line. And then I said the man on the left responds apologetically, and I've got his line. We'll see if it can tell right from left or if we need to add descriptions of these characters. We already set our model. Let's turn sound on. Then for the other settings here, we'll click that. The aspect ratio is auto because it's using that from the starting frame we gave it. For quality, we'll do 1080p. And then for duration, I think we should be able to get both these lines in in 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and select that. For the shot type, we're going to stick with single and generate. I just can't believe you're really doing it. You're actually leaving Springfield. Yeah, I am. There just ain't nothing here for me anymore, man. The audio is a little rough. I'm not sure how I feel about those big pauses in there. And with these video generation models that have built-in audio, when it comes to dialogue, sometimes you get that kind of weird sound. This has it pretty exaggerated there at the beginning, but you also can't pick a specific voice you want to use and match to a character. You sort of get what it gives you. Now, you can describe how you want them to sound there in the prompt like we did, but it doesn't give you a specific voice. And you also really don't have control over when it inserts a big old pause like it did here. So let's take this output video from way into Point six and run it through Design's AI multi-character lip sync tool. Right underneath the video we just generated, we'll click lip sync. It's identified the speakers in the video. We just need to select and select to let it know it's right. Then we'll click next. Now we've got a timeline with our video. This would be what came out of WAN 2.6 on this top track, and it separated each speaker into their own audio tracks here. It looks like speaker B is the guy on the right that talks first, so I'm going to start with him and click pick a voice. Mm -hmm. You can select one of the AI voices, type in your script, and generate your audio right here in Design, or if you've already got your audio like I do, click the Upload Audio tab, and then just drag and drop your file. There it is on our timeline in the Speaker B track. I'm just going to play and make sure I've got the right one in the right spot. I just can't believe you're really... Yep, that's the guy. Now we need to get Speaker A's audio. He's the second guy to speak. Go over to the Upload Audio tab, drag and drop his speech in. I'm going to move him out to the end after the first guy finishes talking. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and move this first guy in just a little bit. Leave a little bit of space there at the beginning of this thing. And then we'll move the second guy out just a bit more. And I don't think we need all this extra extra at the end. So let's just click and drag in, shorten up our video just a bit. We'll leave a little space, but not that much. Up at the top, you can choose between normal mode for basic quality lip sync or pro mode for better movement and quality. We're going to stick with pro mode. And then for output quality, we'll switch that to 1080p. It's going to be 90 credits to generate this lip sync from our video and our audio files. We'll go ahead and click the generate button. I just can't believe you're really doing it. You're actually leaving Springfield. Yeah, I am. There just ain't nothing here for me anymore, man. That's pretty good, especially considering what Design's lip sync had to do to make this work with the lip sync. The video we gave it from WAN 2.6 had this guy on the left with that big pause in the middle, so it had to keep him talking because that's what our audio was doing. If you look real close in the mouth areas, it's not perfect in there, but again, it had to reconfigure this video to make that work. And I really like what Design's lip sync does with the background, the body movements, and all the little non-verbal communication stuff. Now I went ahead and opened up a new project and ran that one again with WAN 2.6 using all the same settings so it's basically a re-roll here's how that turned out i just can't believe you're really doing it you're actually leaving springfield yeah i am there just ain't nothing here for me anymore man so in this run, it didn't have the guy on the right looking to the side for a while, and it didn't have a big old pause on the guy on the left. The audio, though, is a little bit crispy. So I took this output through Design's AI lip sync tool, exactly how we did the first one, and here's how it turned out. I just can't believe you're really doing it. You're actually leaving Springfield. Yeah, I am. There just ain't nothing here for me anymore, man. 
And this is the scene that I had in mind. I think WAM 2.6's output, because it didn't have that big pause and the guy looking away and things that I wasn't really expecting, it was more in line with what I had in my mind. Running it through the lip sync then to put the final polish on, it just made it easier for the lip sync tool to produce this output. Here's a few more videos I created with WAM 2.6 earlier, starting with this guy in the rain. It's in a square aspect ratio for no other reason than I forgot to switch it to the cinematic 16 by nine. But I really don't have any complaints with this one. Everything in the scene looks plausible the character stays consistent, nice detail, the lighting, physics, it all looks good to me. I wonder if this lady's somewhere else in the same town looking for that other dude that looks lost at the bus stop. I guess we'll never know. Anyway, image and video models are notoriously bad at intersections and traffic running. I don't see any major problems here. You could say she should be turned around waiting to go across the crosswalk, but in the prompt, I have the traffic going by behind her. So that would be on me, but I actually like that we know she's not standing there waiting to go across the crosswalk. So now we have to wonder why is she paused there? Here's another text to video. The only sound direction I gave it was the footsteps, which it was a little slow to get those in, but that's okay. And then it added those piano notes there at the end. I'm not sure what it did with the character wardrobe here. I think it's those boots that are really throwing me off. So is Wan or Wan? I think I'm saying that wrong. I say Wan, it's probably Wan, but Wan 2.6, is it perfect? No, I haven't found anything that's perfect yet, but the 15 second duration is pretty cool. And the multi-shot capability is really neat, especially when you combine that with a longer duration where you can actually have multiple shots to pull something off. I think the built-in sound is just as good as Sora or Vio. Only WAN 2.6 has a much lower generation cost than either of those. The WAN 2.6 model itself supports an end frame reference character, so you can upload an image and not have that be your starting frame, but just have that be the character you want to include in the video, and it allows for uploaded audio to drive the video. Those three things, the end frame, the subject reference, and the audio-driven capability, are not in the design implementation of WAN 2.6 yet, but design tells me that they will be adding those, so they may be there by the time you see this video, or if not, just know they're working on it. In addition to creating AI videos with the WAN 2.6 model, you can do a lot of other stuff on design. They have plenty of tools, models, and features for creating and editing AI images and videos. You've got access to all the latest models and tools all in one place under one subscription. If you're into saving money, Design's running a holiday promotion until January 6, 2026, offering a 50% one-time discount valid for both monthly and annual plans. I'll leave a link to Design in the description so you can check it out. Hey, my name is Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and join me for another video.